good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers and to Judge Emmett, who over the past several weeks has been quite busy. You've been very busy over the last few weeks, have you not? The, the whole staff has. Yes. yes, it has. You, along with city, uh, state, federal government, mm -hmm. have been working very hard to prepare for Harvey and now repairing all the damage from that. Um, now that we've gone through it, <laughs> how did we do in terms of getting ready for it and actually dealing with it when it made landfall? We did adequately. I wouldn't say we did great. Uh, it was an event unlike any other. You know, the word unprecedented kept being used, and mm -hmm. it, that's true. Uh, it was a rain event. You know, it wasn't like a hurricane. A hurricane, as you know, we plan 120 hours out, and we know which areas are subject to storm surge. This was so difficult because you didn't know exactly which areas were going to flood. Some areas that traditionally flood didn't. Other areas that have never flooded did. Uh, so it was a, a different sort of response than we would have had, say, for a hurricane hitting, a, hitting us directly. The collaboration that typically goes on between the city and the county, how was that this time? It, if, the post-mortem, from what I've seen, um, you and Mayor Turner got high marks for the collaborative effort that you tended to do. It, you know, the county and city, I and, and the mayors, because I've, I've had several now, uh, we have to work together, and the public has to see us working together. That doesn't mean everything's smooth. I bet if you ask Mayor Turner, we'd say, yeah, there was this or that. But we have to make a decision, we have to go jointly, and we have to have a clear message to the public. Mm -hmm. Because the public's dealing with their own crisis out there. The last thing they need is some kind of crisis in government. One of the things that happened, I remember, as Harvey was approaching the Gulf Coast, local officials were telling people, don't evacuate unless you're in a surge zone, and we tell you to. In the meantime, Governor Abbott was telling people, well, perhaps you ought to evacuate. And so what kind of angst did that cause at all as you were having to clarify well, that it, kind of? It caused uh, us to divert our attention from what we should have been doing at the time. Uh, because now that everybody looks at it, evacuation wasn't even ever a serious consideration because to evacuate four million, five million people, you have to start that two days in advance. And so can you imagine if two days in advance I had said, I want everybody in Harris County to evacuate. We're gonna contraflow the major highways in the state of Texas. And oh, by the way, that means all the businesses are gonna shut down in Harris County. I mean. I'm not sure people would have even listened to that had we said it, mm -hmm. but it would have been the wrong thing to do anyway because then the evacuation itself would have been probably a worse disaster than, than what we experienced with the rainstorm. As it turns out, you had a lot of people who um, stayed as they should have stayed in many circumstances, but the rain was just a, an amazing amount of rain. And a lot of them ended up going into shelters. And that process of setting up the shelters, um, when you clearly saw that you had as many people as you did and city of Houston, NRG, how did that arrangement happen? How did that coordination happen that you came up with the shelters you did and how long are they gonna stay open? Well, George R. Brown was set up by the city fairly quickly. Uh, and then there were shelters that were supposed to be set up by the Red Cross uh, across the county. They didn't have the volunteers, so we ended up literally borrowing trucks and getting drivers to set up those shelters. It quickly became apparent that we needed another large shelter. So that's when I turned to Baker Ripley, the group formerly known as Neighborhood Centers, and we set up NRG. And I have to hand it to Baker Ripley. They probably have now created the model shelter for all future shelters. How so? Well, they did it so well. First was the attitude. Uh, Angela Blanchard, the CEO, said, we don't have evacuees, we have guests. And people were treated as guests. We, wanna may, we may want to have Angela not <laughs> retire, right? I mean, she's, <laughs> she's trying she, to retire. She, we should she, hold she her She will on. be a tough act to follow, that's <laughs> no, for that's sure. True. How long are these uh, shelters going to be open? How many people are still in there as of time we take? I, I don't know about George R. Brown. Uh, our shelter will close Saturday the 24th at the end of the day, midnight, you know, just before midnight on the Sunday, the 25th. So that gives us a couple of weeks, but most people, this is so unlike, everybody wants to talk about Katrina. This is so different because the people in our shelters really want to get back home as soon as possible. And they want to get on with their lives and the kids need to get back in the right schools. So we're beginning that wind down process. Interestingly enough, because NRG was set up and we had such space and, and such mm -hmm. quality there, 
we ended up taking people from 111 different cities at the last count, from all over the state really? of Texas. The, yeah, Beaumont, Port Arthur, okay. all the way down to the Corpus area. And, and so people really came there, and then we told us, we said, look, we're open for business. That's one of those things I jokingly said I violated every bureaucratic rule in the book on this. That's probably another one where I said, it's Harris County, but if, you've got, if you need shelter, come here. What, do, what would you do differently? Based upon the, the post-mortem, I know that you, emergency management, you always look back on the circumstances as they happen and figure out, okay, what could I do differently? What could I do to make it better to we, respond to this we crisis? Haven't, done the after action report yet because right now we're still focused on getting debris picked up and getting people back in their homes. But you know one of the things is, as I mentioned, those early shelters that were supposed to be set up by the Red Cross, they're a volunteer organization. Their volunteers can't get out any, any better than anybody else can. So in the future, we're going to have to have a different system to where we know we can set up those shelters and get them activated. The other thing is, um, we've all heard about the volunteers with their boats who came out to right, rescue. Right. I want to formalize that. Uh, some people have said, well, let's go buy a whole lot more boats for the government. There's no reason to do that. We have community emer citizen emergency response teams right now that uh, are trained to, to deal with disasters. We need to start our own little Harris County Navy, if you will, and say, let's register the boats, let's know where they are, what neighborhoods they're in, and if you're willing to help in times of emergencies, we'll get you on a registry and, and we'll contact you. Well, it sure would be nice not to need boats in the neighborhoods, wouldn't it? But, it uh, would be, but we live on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Yeah, and, and now as a result of that, making news this past week was your proposal. We'll talk 